Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this short micro webinar session on micro learning, uh, but more importantly, what micro learning isn't. Uh, you're joined by myself today, Ashley Sinclair, Senior Marketing Manager here at Litmus Heroes, and Tom Moore, who is our Global Head of Production. Tom, are you there? I'm here, Ashley. Morning, everyone. Fantastic. Um, I think maybe we'll just give another, you know, 30 seconds or so just to allow a few more people to come in because there is some people trickling in still. Um, but I guess, you know, initially we can just kind of start by introducing ourselves and, you know, why we really chose to do a short webinar. It felt a bit ironic doing a, a webinar on micro learning if we, if we didn't keep it short, I guess, right? <laughs> Absolutely, Ashley. I think that's the thing, wasn't it? We said we'll probably talk at double speed just to get through it all quickly, but um, we thought we'd keep it short and sweet, uh, which is hopefully what's encouraged everyone to join us this morning. Yeah, exactly that. So, you know, we, we know that we're all time for you and I are ourselves in, in terms of our working days. Um, so we thought something like a copy break size webinar was a great way to present all the kind of common misgivings that we've seen in micro learning. We've just gone through a big project of developing our own set of micro learning courses. So we've, we've kind of seen some pain points and, and understand uh, some of the challenges that people are facing when it comes to developing very short training interventions. So in the essence of time, shall we get started? Yeah, absolutely. I'll just do a quick intro of myself, Ashley. I know you've said you're the yeah. senior marketing manager for Litmus Heroes, and you kind of introduced me as VP of Global Head of Production, which sounds like a very grand title. But essentially, on behalf of uh, Litmus Heroes, I look after our production line and our roadmap. So I work um, with our production team to produce all the great content that we push out, as well as listening to our customers and our sales teams and all the other guys um, that are telling us uh, what kind of content we should be creating in the future. So uh, as you say, we've been doing a bit of our own micro learning journey. So keen to share that this morning. So great. I think in that vein, we've got a quick poll that we wanted to get started with. Um, and so we thought we'd just ask uh, you guys that are out there, hopefully listening, um, a kind of question around how long can training be and still be considered micro learning? Um, so hopefully there's a chance for you guys to, uh, that are on the call, just to kind of give us some input on that. And I think, as Ashley was explaining, we've been doing some of our own activity in this space. We've recently launched a, a, whole, a whole new collection called 60 Second Skills. Um, and hopefully some of the people on this call have had a chance to, to um, you know, see some of that and, and take some of that. Um, but it was interesting because I think we, we recognise that micro learning is a bit of a buzzword. And I think we were keen to really say, well, actually, when it comes to micro learning, there's some really great ways to do it and there's some not so great ways. And that's what we were trying to do with a 60 second collection. And we had this whole sort of discussion in our office, really going back to something called the one minute manager, some of which you, you some of which you might have read um, uh, out there. And it was this kind of concept that you can have one minute conversations, you can have topics around one minute goals uh, and all these other kinds of ideas. And we tried to then take that back into the learning space and say, actually, if we were to sit down and take a course, what could we get across in 60 seconds that was still meaningful, that was truly in that micro learning space? So it's been an interesting yeah. journey. And I think we'll share some of that as we go through this uh, this webinar. Yeah, well, the results are in. Um, I'll share them in just a second. But it's a, it's a, it's a pretty uh, mixed bag. We've gone anywhere from one minute to 15 minutes here on the poll. Um, and it does show some interesting kind of uh, divides around duration uh, particularly so we'll come back to that later because we do talk a little bit around duration and you know what kind of makes it like micro learning um, but let's just crack on and get straight into it you know we've kind of decided to do a webinar on micro learning because <clears throat> it's, it's a bit of a buzzword it's being bandied around the learn tech industry for a few years now it was very prevalent at the learning technologies expo and conference a couple of weeks back in London um, it's actually even been copyrighted now as well um, was it patented, Tom, or I can't remember exactly. Is yes. it patented or? Yeah, yeah it, it has, um, yes, it has been. Yep. So yeah, so we've you know we've we've kind of seen this word being bandied around. We've seen some very interesting Frankenstein versions of this type of content. So we really just wanted to kind of get you guys that straight in terms of understanding a little bit more about what micro learning isn't it isn't, um, so that you can kind of start to avoid some of these pitfalls yourself when you start to try and introduce this into your uh, L&D strategy. So let's just get started. Microlearning is not focused on more than one topic. That is most basic, microlearning is a brief focused module that lasts no more than 10 minutes, depending on which resource you read. It can vary greatly, however, much like our poll earlier. Let me just share those results with you. Um, so you can probably see we've got a, a pretty widespread uh, results here around 25 percent of you think microlearning can be up to 15 minutes long, 28 think five, 
um, and only eight percent of you think a one minute course is is a only the only appropriate thing for micro learning so again there's some division of opinion here but one thing we can fundamentally focus on for sure is that it needs to be focused on a, a specific and single concept it needs to be limited to stand alone and have only one concept being covered at, at a distinct time. Although the important thing to caveat with that is they can be set together to teach related concepts over time. So for example, if you wanted to deliver some leadership training using microlearning, you'd need to break it down into much simpler consumable chunks that, and ha that have specific singular learning outcomes. So say if I wanted to train my managers, you'd have to break out your, your management training into much finer details, such as things like how to give constructive feedback or communicating effectively. Together and combined, these can all convey an overall leadership message as part of a, a training or microlearning collection. But microlearning just doesn't work and it just doesn't have that impact. Um, and it isn't as effective as a, a training delivery model if you're not just focusing on one single concept. Number two, over to you, Tom. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Ashley. Oh, sorry. So, yeah, so, one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so next slide coming up, I believe. So I think for us, just following that vein through, and if we can skip back to the slides there, Ashley, we're still on the quick poll there. Oh, sorry. One second. Let me bear with me. Technology, eh? Brilliant. Thank you. So as we, as, as Ashley was saying there, really, not only is it important to just think about just one topic, I think there's a risk when it comes to doing micro learning that actually what you think that you could potentially do is just take a course that you've already got and maybe just break that down into, into micro learning. I think we've all considered that you know you've got a long course you sort of think actually that's killing by killing we mean sort of boring our learners so what do we do we try and make it shorter and that is a good idea but where you can really sort of fall down is where perhaps your designers or maybe instructional designers just decide to chunk down that old content and turn that into micro learning and i think the point really is is that you kind of just got to go back to the start and we've done that recently when we were looking at our 60 second collection um, we've done it where actually we've sort of said that actually something wouldn't suit um, micro learning. Um, so if you take our 60 second collection, we've done some stuff in personal development, we've done stuff in management and leadership. And just like Ashley was saying there, we've said, right, what are the kinds of things that we want to, to tackle? And then we've broken that down. So we've got something around um, mentoring, we've got something around coaching, we've got some stuff coming up around um, learning styles and, and these different types of things and we're and we and we've kind of deliberately chosen one topic uh, and then whilst it might be part of a much bigger um, uh, theme we're chunking it down um, so you know a, another good example I'm a tennis player um, you know I, I wouldn't just say here's a whole kind of you know hundred slides on how to learn tennis you'd actually go back to the basics and break it down so how do you hold a tennis racket um, how do you do a forehand uh, you know what's a serve and you kind of go down it that way so I guess what we're trying to say here really is we wouldn't want you just changing the length of pre-existing content uh, because that really isn't micro learning. It's not going to be effective and it will probably be as ineffective as the original bore fest, the original course that you've kind of created. OK, on to the next point, Ashley. Thanks. So we're going to we're going to be honest here. I mean, micro learning certainly isn't going to work, um, you know, uh, when you want to train your staff on those really meaty subjects. So, for example, um, when we've been looking at micro learning, we probably tended to think about things like policy and compliance. Um, those some of those broader topics, uh, they don't always lend themselves you know, to to uh, micro learning approach. Not always strictly true. So, for example, we've done a course recently on general data protection regulations. Many of you might be aware of that. Uh, and our kind of um, course that we created was probably kind of close to 30 to 35 minutes. So that's quite a chunky topic. And we're about to release a GDPR Express course. But again, what we did with that is we went back to the start and we said, actually, what we're trying to get across here, what are what is the theme? What's the 10 key points we want to cover? And that's what the micro learning course is going to contain. And that, that course is around about two to three minutes in length. So it's about being smart and thinking about the best way that you want to deliver the message you need to and the medium that supports that desired training outcome. And it certainly doesn't work in every environment. And I think what we're sort of saying here is that sometimes there are definitely going to be times when classroom training or longer e-learning is appropriate. So certainly I wouldn't want you going away from this webinar and thinking everything's got to be micro learning um, because it really it really shouldn't. It's about you know, picking the different types of styles that exist and fitting that to the need that you're trying to fulfill. Um, and I think you should really be asking yourself, can you distill that training outcome to a single instance? And if you can, then you may be able to turn, turn that training intervention into micro learning. 
Um, and as I was explaining there, actually, just with that GDPR Express course, it can be great for refresher training. And we're doing something similar, actually, with one of our older data protection courses. People um, recognize that GDPR is coming, but data protection course that we had, it was longer, but there were still elements of it that were really useful because it kind of boiled down to what makes for good data kind of um, management. And so, again, we've turned that into a sort of three to four minute course. Um, so those are the types of things that we've been, we've been looking at. OK, Ashley, over to you. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think, um, you know, one of, one of the big points that you made there is, you know, absolutely everything shouldn't, shouldn't be turned into micro learning. You know, it is um, absolutely unequivocally not a silver bullet for your L&D strategy. If you have learners that are disengaged and not interested in your training, if you introduce some micro learning, that's not going to suddenly magically transform everything. You know, there is a reason why it's a buzzword du jour, but there's also a reason why things like gamification and mobile learning have been its predecessors. We know you guys are time for, we know L&D departments are really trying to modernize their proposition and really reconnect learners with a, a much more digital, engaging environment. Um, but micro learning has to sit within that climate. It, it is not the kind of ineffable silver bullet that's going to transform your training overnight. You know, it, it, it does, however, have a fighting chance of getting your learners interested, helping them learn better, and op ultimately giving them opportunities for refreshers if it's part of your wider learning culture evolution strategy. So I guess the key here is that they, it can help jumpstart a learning culture evolution, but it isn't going to change your culture overnight. So if you just throw your micro learning into your outdated LMS in amongst all your old legacy flash content, please help me if you have flash content, we can <laughs> need to get that help if you, if you have them. Um, but don't be surprised if your staff ignore it. You know, if it's sitting amongst a lot of outdated stuff in an outdated LMS that they maybe can't access on their mobile, um, you know, they, they're not really going to connect with it in the way that you want. So the point here is that it really does need to sit amongst the wider L&D strategy. And it's about being smart where you introduce this training. Again, going back to what Tom said around identifying opportunities where it's appropriate using mediums and subject matter where this actually can really work for your learning environment. Micro learning should always sit within a clear L&D strategy. And if you do it well, you'll be able to maximize the potential gains and improvements around engagement that micro learning has to offer. So we have about five, three minutes left, Tom. So I think we'll, uh, we'll, keep, we'll just kind of wrap up here as quick as we can. <laughs> so, I mean, you've gone through sort of four things there where we've gone through four things there that micro learning is not. And I guess we're just going to kind of summarize here with a few more. I think it's worth just saying that micro learning is not just for millennials. Sorry, no, we hate that word too, but let's face it, they're out there. Um, it isn't in a fixed, uh, it's not fixed in its format and delivery. Um, but I think the supposed thing really is that it's not going to go away anytime soon. So whether we like the buzzword or we don't like the buzzword, I think what we're trying to get across here really is that back to that, what it's not. And actually, you know, at times it's, it's definitely a, a way of doing learning that is worth embracing. So, Here's some kind of uh, quick sort of things to think about when introducing micro learning if you've not done it before. So going back to some of the points we've covered, think about digitizing and modernizing your defunct assets. So what we're trying to say here, I guess, is if you've got existing content, shouldn't necessarily throw it away, but do think about, um, you know, kind of what can you do, what can you already use? If you've got classroom materials that are out there, then actually some of that that learning could be very powerful in a, in a micro learning uh, vehicle. Um, you know, repurpose the old content, that's great, but don't just shorten it into smaller chunks. So we were talking about this idea of going back up almost, you know, helicopter view, reviewing, restructuring, realigning it, um, so that actually when you're using it, it's, people don't just think, okay, hang on, I saw this in 100 slides, now I'm just getting it in one, one minute, 100 slides, but in a different way. And I guess, you know, um, a, a little plug here, but, you know, think about utilizing video content. Um, and that could come from Litmus Heroes, but, you know, it can come from other locations too. Certainly, if you subscribe to us, we provide a lot of our content in the animated explainer video, which can naturally lend itself um, into that kind of micro learning environment. Okay. So I think. Yeah, just, and we just. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Go on, Ashley. Go, go, go. <laughs> I was just going to say, yeah, we, you know, we, we, um, 
we really just kind of wanted to give you guys some parting thoughts really around best practices as well. Um, you know, I, I know we are nearly at time, but hopefully you'll allow us an extra minute or two um, just to really kind of summarize some of the some of the, some of the things that we've learned, I think, in, in developing our 60 second skill stuff. Obviously, you know, as we, as we saw in our poll, the, the times and opinions on how long micro learning should be can vary greatly. But I think actually the most important things are you know, approaching this in the right way. So things like less is more, both in time and content. So when creating your own micro learning, it's important to remember to keep things short and succinct in terms of duration and don't overwhelm your staff with a huge array of content in the training. Simpler is actually better here. Complicated content is hard to turn down to something like micro learning. So keep it clean and clear and to the point. Remember to focus only on one subject. Just as keeping things simple is vital for micro learning at success, it's also just as important to streamline and trim down your training objectives to singular outcomes, which helps you better structure the micro learning and maximize your chances of increased memory retention. Micro learning just can't work when you're trying to cover multiple subjects synchro synchronously. Keeping it fresh, and I think, you know, again, we, Tom just touched on video in terms of uh, medium, in terms of delivery, but, you know, it's all about variating here. Um, you know, this doesn't just apply to micro learning, if we're being honest, you know, in terms of training delivery, we want to keep it fresh and keep our staff interested by giving them different mediums. But the point still stands, the more variety you can offer your staff in terms of training, the more likely you are to maintain attention span, get them engaged, and keep them interested. Some of the common mediums that we've seen work well for micro learning include things like video, images, infographics, podcasts, games, simulation quizzes, etc. All those sort of things really can connect and engage people really well. And the final thing really is know your audience. So, you know, take everything we said with a pinch of salt because some of these tips may not work for your learners. And that's really because each audience pool is different. It's really, really important that you take the time to understand your learners, their expectations, and also the training culture of your business and the current technological climate that you have in terms of uh, ability to deliver. Um, once you understand those things, then you can actually create a strategy of which micro learning should absolutely be a part of that can help to really start to affect change best. Also, when it comes to micro learning, make sure you're creating content on subjects that mean something to your staff and ensure that you're doing it with a medium that will connect and speak to them. And that's pretty much it from us. I, we've gone oof, two minutes over, Tom, but I think, uh, I think we, <laughs> we've squeezed that in well. What do you reckon? Absolutely. Yeah, I, hope, I certainly hope so. Yeah, I mean, we did, we, we did want to give you guys a chance to ask some questions, but I know we have said that this is going to be a 15-minute webinar. But if you guys do have any questions, um, feel free to pop them in. Just bear with me. I've got a couple in here. Everyone's just saying thank you. I've had a few people asking what the results of the poll were, um, so I'll just read that out. So we had 25% of people said that uh, training could be up to 15 minutes, 23% saying it could be up to 10, 28% saying up to five minutes, 16% up to three minutes, and 8% up to one. So it's a, a pretty, pretty widespread <laughs> poll result as far as it could go. <laughs> oh, is there the correct answer? No. <laughs> I think is the point there. Tom, do you have an opinion on um, how long micro learning should be? Yeah, I mean, it is a tough one. I think, I, mean, I think in our experience, we've probably found that um, having done it in a number of different ways that I would say my sort of personal opinion, and, and it probably is that, is that micro learning is probably up to five minutes. I think when you're trying to cover that one topic and do it in a way that grabs people, engages them, means that you don't go off pieced and suddenly start expanding the topic out into into different you know avenues uh, almost off focus and doing it up to that five minute and therefore probably in terms of content it's probably two to three minutes is probably what you're looking at um, is kind of where yeah. we've found the the sweet spot shall we say yeah brilliant okay well unless anybody has any questions we're not getting them um, any coming through so hopefully we've answered some of your questions around what micro learning isn't and maybe giving you a little bit of ammunition to start introducing this really engaging learning model into your own training environment. Thank you very much for joining us today, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, everyone.